Greetings guys, girls and non-binary pals and welcome back to another Christmas video and by that I mean another one of my daily uploads leading up to Christmas. Uh, it's not Christmas themed <laughs> other than I am presenting you with the present of my presence. That's Christmassy, right? <laughs> Several months ago, I made a video about this like pickup artist called Playing With Fire. And recently I revisited his channel because I was like, I wonder what he's been up to. I wonder if there's any more good content that I can squeeze something out of. And when I went to his channel to watch videos and completely fry my brain, <laughs> I ended up falling down a bit of a rabbit hole of going through different like dating coaches, pickup artists, type people, you know, the really, really super fun side of YouTube that have way too many people watching. Uh, and the person in particular that I wanna talk about today is this guy called Austin Dunham. And he's not like super popular. He has like 150K subscribers, uh, but he makes a lot of like, dating content, pickup content, the like five things to never do on the first date and uh, how to make women fall in love with you. But one video in particular really caught my eye and set off so many, so many alarm bells that I had to sit down and I had to talk about it. And that video is how to get women attached to you best strategy, which is obviously a terrible, terrible title and implies so many awful things. Um, so I feel like we need to talk about it. So we're gonna talk about it. Uh, but first I'll give you a little bit of background on this guy because I spent all day yesterday watching his videos and trying to get a grip on what he's about and who he is. So we'll do a little bit of a deep dive into him before we get into the main event. Just interrupting myself quickly here to say thank you to today's patron of the day, Theo. You have been around for forever since pre-YouTube and I hope you know how much I appreciate you. Um, so thank you so much for all of your support for all of this time. And I hope that you enjoy the video. If you would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash savvy cat. I appreciate it hugely. All right. Let's carry on. <laughs> Basically, this guy's name is Austin, obviously. He's around my age. He said he was 22, 23. Uh, so I don't know if he's 22 or 23, but he's he's around my age. I don't know why I didn't just Google his age before um, instead of just going off of his word, but he's actually 26. <laughs> um, in one of his videos, he was like, I live really well for, you know, someone who's 22 to 23, and I don't know if I just like, misunderstood the context or what was going on, um, but I kind of just assumed he was 22, 23 based on the fact that he said that, but he's not, he's 26, so please ignore, like, half of the stuff I'm about to say, because it all has to do with the fact that he's 22, 23, but he freaking, he just lied to my face. He, cool, love that. And he, he says some things that are very conflicting and it's really funny. Like he talks about this stuff as though he's had years and years and years of experience, right? Which obviously he hasn't. He has not had the time to have years and years of experience, especially because he said that he was in a serious relationship for like a year in college in uni then there was a three month period where he was single and getting over that breakup when he met someone new and then he was in a year and a half relationship with them and now he has been single for about a year just over a year uh but he talks about this as though he's been single for his whole entire life and that he's 35 years old and has been doing this for years and years more on him is that he sees himself as a red pill guy now this confused the shit out of me because obviously when we think of red pillars we think of like incels and like the far right right that's kind of what we think of when we talk about red pill and so i saw him he has a video with this guy called red pill versus black pill dating advice and i was like Okay, now I know what a red pill is, but now what the fuck is a black pill? And I Googled black pill and it came up with basically saying a black pill is an extreme version of a red pill. Like it's an extreme incel who just thinks it's hopeless uh, and they can never stop being an incel and women are terrible and they may as well just 
die themselves, not the women. They have like suicide blogs and stuff because they think women will never love them, which is horrific. Um, so obviously seeing the title of that video, I was like, what the fuck? What is this? Do I want to click on it? What is gonna, what is happening? And then I found out <laughs> that in this insane world that they live in of pickup artistry, um, and hookup culture, red pill means you think game is the most important thing. But I think red pill is more about just understanding the nature of females and applying that to your overall dating strategy. Knowing how, you know, how women subtly test and do little shit to see if you're internally strong, if you're psycholog psychologically strong. Now for you yourself, in regards to your personal dating life, mm -hmm. what have you noticed most in regards to getting the most investment on your return? Was it improving Ooh, your looks? That's a good question. Was it learning female nature of the game or was it all of it? Understanding the female mind and how they work is the key to success. The key to the best return on your investment because that's what women are. <laughs> Obviously, it's a transaction. And then black pill is someone who thinks looks are the most important things. How attractive you are physically is the key to success. So really, I mean, black pill is really about just working with what you got, knowing that looks is number one, handle that shit first, and then everything else comes second. Yeah. That's where, how you get the highest return on your investment in terms of how much time you spend trying to hook up with women. It's a whole fucking insane, fucked up sort of thing. Just viewing women as a game and something you need to like, understand and play it's like it's wild man and i find that so interesting of like i wonder how to what degree they think we think it's a game because it's so insane to listen to them talk red pill is about you know understanding how the female works you know all the games that they're playing with you you know all the signs that they're doing you can read their mind you understand how they're toying with you you know that they're trying to get you to do this and admit to this and they're playing with you like this and i'm like bro not everything is a game i know you view women as a game and i know you don't view us as equal human individuals but it's it's not a game it's it's life uh, not everyone is toying with you and trying to play mind games. People like to have conversations and get to know you. No one is testing you per se. And like, if someone is testing you, it's not then your responsibility to try to manipulate them in order to pass the test. They're doing what you call a vetting process where you test them in return. But like, it's, it's not a game. It's about trying to find someone compatible you know? And it's so insane that you're like, here's how to manipulate them into, into thinking that you pass their tests. Dude, no. So basically this man is a red pillar, not an incel, although he does hold some incel values such as the 80-20 rule, which is 80% of women are only attracted to 20% of men, except he actually thinks it's the 90-10 rule. So 90% of women are only attracted to 10% of men, which is so ridiculous. That's such a ridiculous thing to believe. And the implication that you're attracted to every woman is so obscure and untrue. Like, d don't pretend that any woman can get any person they like. Don't pretend that you would like go after any woman. You're like, women have expectations. They want you to be high value. You need to be, it's always just height, status, and money. You need to have those three things in order for a woman to like you. It's like, dude, no. <laughs> those three things don't matter in terms of building a long-term relationship. I can never tell if they're trying to view things as like how to get into a relationship or how to hook up with women. I like, they get, they confuse me because they seem to be saying both at the same time and it doesn't make a ton of sense. But implying that like only 10% of men will ever end up in a relationship is just so whack. That's so, so untrue. Women and men are like equally as likely to end up in relationships. There's not like, there's not, there's not a huge disparity there. I don't really know where you're getting this information, especially because I'm looking at you <laughs> right now, right? Okay, I can see you, I have eyes. You cannot tell me <laughs> that you have a hard time 
finding women who are willing to hook up with you. You cannot look me in the eyes and tell me that is difficult. You can say whatever you like. You can tell me that game is the most important. Understanding a woman's mind is the most important. You could go into a club and not say a single word and someone will go home with you. Don't bullshit me. I know because I would. <laughs> and that's where this like whole thing of like men being like, women get emotionally attached. They can't like just sleep with you and like never get attached to you. Bro, the second you open your mouth, I don't want anything to do with you. You know, like I don't, I don't agree with your values. I don't agree with anything that you're saying ever, but like, you're really pretty. You're beautiful. And you know that. Obviously it takes more than that in order to like get into a relationship and build connections with women. Because as I said, if I went home with you and then you started talking, I, you, I would lose interest and we would not have a connection and I would not date you, <laughs> you know? Like it is important. But like in terms of just like casual hookups, it's really, really not as important as you seem to think it is. Really all you have to do is not be creepy and not be an asshole. The problem comes when you start going up to women like during the day at a cafe, in the mall, walking down the street, that's when you're gonna get rejected. It's got nothing to do with game or attraction. It's just like there are boundaries. And he even acknowledged that in a video of his where he was like, I've talked to women about where the best place to approach them is. And I've talked to them because like women tend to be more open to meeting people online than they are in person. And I've asked why they're more open to meeting people online or in nightclubs versus during the day. And they all pretty much say the same thing of when I'm approached during the day, it's really creepy and I'm uncomfortable. And his response to that is so guys, you need to practice. No, you need to leave women alone. And if they're more comfortable meeting you online, then do that. Meet them online, meet them at nightclubs, meet them at places where they're open to. Go to like singles clubs, house parties, like social events, whatever, where people are willing to make conversation and looking to make friends or meet people, not just out on the street, all right? That's my advice. Don't approach people on the street because like, 999 times out of a thousand, that's not gonna work in your favor and you've just made someone uncomfortable. That's a bit of background on him. Uh, so we're gonna watch this video, how to get women attached to you, best strategy, because by the title, seems very manipulative, doesn't it? Let's see how it goes. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you how you can get her attached, get her emotionally invested into you, get her obsessed with you, get her addicted to you. We're already off to a great start. Get her obsessed with you, get her addicted to you, get her attached to you. None of those things are good things. You shouldn't make someone emotionally dependent on you. You shouldn't make someone attached to you and obsessed with you. You shouldn't make someone feel as though they need to be with you because that is unhealthy. That is not okay. Don't do that. End of video. Don't even need to say anything more. Don't fucking do that. The first thing you gotta remember in regards to getting a woman attached to you is this main principle, is that you have to be either her first or be her best. Keep in mind hypergamy, guys. Female nature is inevitable and it will always win. Women chase and want what's better than them. Your looks, your money, your status, something has to be better than her in regards to for her to chase you. This is such an interesting generalization. It's such an interesting rule. Women are looking for someone who is better than them, either financially in status or in looks. Again, I don't know why it always comes down to those three. Money, looks, and status are not the three most important things in the world. They're probably the three like lower importance things in my mind in terms of like relationships. They're like really the last thing that I care about. I, I think you've got it really twisted. It's not that women want someone who is better than them. It's that men want someone whom they can control. Like if you are financially in charge of the relationship, then she is dependent on you. And if you are like, more attractive, she's less likely to cheat on you. You know, like these are all things that like, I think you are coming from and what you think is important to you. And you're projecting that onto what you think 
women want because like don't sit here and say you're gonna date a low value woman you know what i mean like you have standards too it's just a really really interesting take you have to be better than her no you have to be equals like there's no better or worse it's all about how you connect in terms of like where you're at in life and your life experience and what you enjoy and what your morals are and where you stand and what you can like converse about because you could be like a millionaire or you could be dirt poor if we have nothing in common then i'm not gonna have a relationship with you but if we have everything in common and we connect really well then i will have a relationship with you another thing i want to talk about is maintenance of the attachment so actually getting a woman to be attached to you is a lot harder than it maintaining the attachment it's pretty hard to like actually sleep with a woman the first time but you'll realize after you slept with her the first time the second third time fourth time fifth time becomes a whole lot easier because you already did the work to build that process out i don't entirely agree with you again this is all very circumstantial you're basing this off of like nothing getting a woman to sleep with you once once is not as hard as I think you may like to pretend it is. Getting them to sleep with you again is also not as easy as you like to pretend that it is. Again, it is all circumstantial. If you go home with someone from like a club or something, chances are you're not gonna see them again. <laughs> chances are you slept with them very easily. As I said, you sir could just walk into a club and go home with pretty much anybody there. And they're not gonna get attached to you. They're not gonna try to call you again, unless you did, unless it was really, really good. The chances of you sleeping with them again are relatively low. Because of the situation in which everyone there was just looking for like a one night stand, they're not coming back. So if you're looking for just like a hookup or one night time, that's the way to do it. You've even said in one of your videos that like you expect sex on the first, second or third date um, because that's when, you know, they are like, they should be attracted to you. So they should want to have physical contact with you. They should want to have sex by that point. And if they don't, then they're not into you enough. One, two or three dates does not sound like a lot of work. And it shouldn't be a lot of work. You should just enjoy a person's company and spending time with them and talking to them. That should just be having a good time. The fact you view it as work and a game is so insane. Just like hang out with people, man. Just like <laughs> be a normal person and like have a relationship with someone that's not you trying to manipulate them. If they like you, they like you. If they don't, they don't. If you have a first date and it ends in sex, great good for you but like you don't have to get them attached to you I don't, I don't understand what you're doing i don't understand the angle here because you don't want a relationship but you also want to get women attached to you so what's so you're sleeping with the same woman over and over again and emotionally manipulating her in order to keep her coming back um but you don't want a relationship but you also don't want to just have one night stands is it just because you like the control and the idea that you have power over this woman and can keep her coming back? Because that's kind of fucked up. It's kind of fucked up. You can have friends with benefits where both of you are gaining something and you're also both having a good time hanging out with each other and you're not viewing it as work or as a game. You're just enjoying each other's company and also having sex. Totally cool, totally healthy. Thumbs up, do that. That's great, that's good fun, good for you. You can also have a relationship, which is the same sort of idea, except it's got romantic attraction involved as well. And it's a bit, it's just a bit different, you know, romantic and platonic are like very, very similar, but they have different feelings involved, you know? Or you can have like one night stands, or you can have just like casual sex. You can just call someone and be like, hey, you wanna come over and then they leave. Or you go buy a drink and like, and you can do it just like one time, go to a club, you hook up with someone consensually, obviously, or like go to a social event or a singles club or like a sex club or something. And like, just leave it at that. Have a one night stand. Don't be trying to just like emotionally manipulate people into thinking they want relationships with you and you want a relationship with them and then just like keeping them there. The whole entire time, promising them things you won't give them, um, just because you enjoy the game of being in control of someone because that's fucked up. 
So the next thing you gotta do guys, and this is inevitable, is that you have to put it down in the bedroom. When I say be her best, I'm not talking about just be her best guy. I'm talking about be her best in regards to sexual experiences also. You must be laying down that pipe. This one is really funny to me of like, be your best in the bedroom. You have to be laying that pipe. You have to do so good at sex, but... <laughs> Here's the kicker for you. He has a video on how to uh, be so good in bed that a woman will keep coming back. And his one, one piece of sex advice that he thinks will keep women coming back and that will like blow their minds is deep penetration. The stroke game needs to be on point. And there are two different variables that will dictate whether or not your stroke game is on point. Number one is gonna be the power of the thrust. If you're consistently being very soft with your thrust, chances are you're probably not stimulating her to her full force max capability. One thing I've noticed that will help a lot of men, including myself, stroking, is to do deadlifts, RDLs, or Romanian deadlifts, hip thrusts, etc. Doing those and doing RDLs and just overall training your posterior chain will make, over time, make the strength and the power of your thrust more and more powerful so that she actually feels some sort of penetration. So basically you wanna make sure that you're doing full deep strokes. As my guy Steph says, you need to dig until she mother bust. That's it, that's literally it. When I watched this video, I thought he was gonna say more. I thought he was gonna talk about like foreplay and like non-penetrative sex and other stuff. No, no, no. <laughs> He thinks you should go to the gym and do your hip thrust so you can get a powerful thrust and so you can thrust deep and slow and you can edge yourself so you can last longer. Those, that was his sex advice. That was it. He said that that is how you please a woman. My guy, I think I know why you have to manipulate women emotionally in order to keep them coming back. That is not how you do it. <laughs> That's... It's not what you do. That's not gonna work. Yeah, that alone is not gonna keep women coming back. Do you, are you aware of how many women actually orgasm from penetration alone? It's like, what, is it 80% of women don't orgasm from penetration alone? So if every woman you're sleeping with is climaxing through just penetration, they're lying to you, they're faking it, and they want it to be over. We've all been there, we've all done that. You get bored, you get bored, it's taking too long. You just want it. You just want it to be over, and that's a very quick way out. You could just, I mean, saying no works too. Yeah, you're not laying pipe as good as you think you are. <laughs> there is much more you can do. Um, starting with ask them what they want. That actually was his other sex advice: was to not ask what women want. Much like women expect you to lead when you're on a date, they also expect you to lead when you're in the bedroom. Meaning. Don't ask her what she wants to do. Don't ask her, hey, do you wanna turn around? Um, should we do this position now? Don't ask, just do. Don't ask them what they like. Don't ask them what they want. Take control, uh, flip them over, change position without telling them, without asking. Don't, don't say, do you like this? What do you want me to do? What's good for you? Don't say any of that. Only weak men say that. You have to be dominant, you have to be powerful, and you have to do what you want to do. Don't ask her, she doesn't know what she wants. She doesn't know. Only you, the man who knows nothing but penetration, knows what she wants. Terrible sex advice. Terrible. My advice to you is to ask a woman what she likes, ask her what she wants, uh, and, and, and use that I also love that men go to other men for sex advice. Like he's made this video on like how to be good in bed, how to like please a woman and men go and watch it as though a man telling men how to please a woman is the best way to know. Listen to freaking people with vulvas. That's the one way you'll learn. You can't learn from other men. That's so stupid. What are you, what are you doing? Your, your bedroom play is definitely, I don't think what's keeping them coming back because your advice is terrible. Um, I hope you take mine on board. Next point, guys, is that you have to give her an experience if you want her to be attached to you. Think about the first point I said. 
you either have to be her best or her first. Her first ties into the experience part. You can't be her first in regards to doing things with her. We're going to water parks, we're traveling. I'm going to Dominican Republic. I got a Europe trip here planned too, here soon. And I'm just always trying to figure out the things that I haven't done. And then those things also tend to be the things that she hasn't done too. How privileged <laughs> you must be to be like, I'm single, I wanna hook up with women. I'm gonna take these girls I've known for a week to Europe. Women that I'm not committed to, women that I don't plan on being in a relationship with, just gonna take them to Europe so they'll be emotionally attached to me so I can keep sleeping with them, as well as other women. Again, bro, you can do that. You are absolutely allowed to do that. If everyone is consenting, obviously, that's totally fine. But it's so weird to come at it from a perspective of making someone emotionally attached to you instead of just being a friend. You can just be a friend and do all that stuff and have sex with them. You can have open relationships. Can we stop pretending that like polyamory doesn't exist? Like you don't have to be monogamous. You can have more than that. You can have a lot of partners. That is something that you can have as long as everyone involved knows the situation and there is communication. If you are hooking up with women but you're also like kind of in a relationship with them, as long as they know that you're also doing that with other women, then it's fine. If you have to lie to them, then it's not okay. It's really, really simple. There are more people who are open to that than you may think there are. And I do think it's something that we need to normalize a lot more because monogamy is very heavily enforced and it's not something a lot of people actually want. It's something that we're made to believe that we want. I think that we need to open the conversation a lot more around polyamory because it is it is something that I think more people would get a kick out of. A lot of people would enjoy, no matter their gender or sexual orientation or whatever. You can do all of those things without lying, without manipulating people. You, you, you are able to do that. And the last point, guys, is that you have to sell her a dream. She has to see a future with you. She has to see that you're somebody that can be within her life in the long run. And you will always be this fun, outgoing, adventurous guy. And she has to see basically just, just a future with you. If that means kids and a marriage, then so be it. Let her know that you can be that guy. Now, of course, this is where some manipulation gets into play. I cannot believe he word for word just said, this is where some manipulation comes into play. Usually, they avoid that word. Usually, they try to pretend that they're doing a good thing. They usually aren't so straight up about their tactics, about being manipulative. They usually try to hide that. But like, this man is self-aware. He's like, yeah, manipulate women. That's my advice. You gotta figure out what she really wants out of life. What does she really want out of a partner? Then mold yourself into that, or at least showcase that to her so that you can sell her a dream and she sees a future with you. And so she'll never wanna leave you. She'll attach to you because she sees, this is my perfect guy. This is my perfect dream, man. And I'll do anything to make it work. Find out what she wants and then become that and lie to her and build a relationship off of lies and false hope and false promises so that she falls in love with you. But it's all just a game. You don't actually love her. You just want to sleep with her and have power over her and have her coming back because it feels so good to have women love you when you don't love them back. It feels so good to have control over someone and be able to make them do what you want them to do. Dude, no, no, don't fucking do that. Find someone who wants the same thing as you. It's not as hard as you think. You come out here talking about how like women don't like most men. You have to be in the 10% because women only like these specific types of men. But there are so many women who also desire what you desire but you're not going after them. Why? 
because you like the game that you've created. You don't want women who want the same as you. You want women who want to be attached. You want women who want to be in relationships and you want to play them and you want to get them attached to you because it feels good and it boosts your ego and you like having power and control. It's not that women like men who have power over them. It's that you put yourself in a position in which you have power over someone and you convince yourself that that's what they want and that's what they like but it's just because they've now gotten themselves in the situation in which that is the position they're put in. Yes, sometimes women like people who have control over them, they like power dynamics, but it has to be consensual power dynamics where both people are actually aware of the dynamic and the relationship that they're in. You have to know who the person you're dating is. You have to know what's going on. If you are lying to them about what they want, if you are telling them something that is not true, that's 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 like bordering on assault. If you are like having sex with someone based off of lies, they don't know the person that they're having sex with, so it's not full consent. You know? It's kind of like in a different sense, right? If you have an STI and you don't tell someone and you have unprotected sex with them, they're not consenting to that sexual experience. They wouldn't have given consent had they known the full information, so therefore it's not proper consent. And if you are lying to someone about who you are, what you want, and you're manipulating them so they'll have sex with you, that is also not consent. But you can get away with it because it's not illegal. Not that you ever get in trouble even when you do it illegally, but like, because they've like said yes, uh, it's not illegal, it's legally consent, but morally, it is not. And you have to live with that on your shoulders. And you have to know that once these women find that out, they are going to be very hurt and feel really gross and really awful. And you've taken advantage of them and put them in a situation in which they are going to have to deal with that and process that forever. And it's not a fun situation to be in. And it's not one anyone should be in. Be honest about what you want and who you are and find people who want the same thing. Don't manipulate people into being emotionally attached to you. It is never healthy to have someone emotionally attached to you. You shouldn't be emotionally attached to anyone. Um, and I know that that's a really difficult thing. I personally struggle really, really badly with that. I do get emotionally attached to people. I do have massive codependency issues. I have borderline personality disorder. That's like my entire thing um, is that I am very, very codependent and I get very, very attached and I'm very easily manipulated. And that is something that I have to work through and work on myself, but that is something that I do experience. And so I know how it feels. And it's not an okay thing to do, to prey on that and to go after vulnerable women who you know you can manipulate. That's one thing that uh, I respect about the playing with fire man, right? That I did a video about. And I think Chad Chad also did a video about him a while ago. I watched a video of his when I was planning this video that I genuinely agreed with everything he said. And I didn't think that that would happen. He is older, he does have more experience. I believe he is in a relationship. I'm assuming an open relationship, but I'm not sure. But his whole thing is that you cannot lie. You cannot manipulate people because that is not okay. And I absolutely agree. This video, he basically said like, white lies are okay, but big lies aren't. And his rule for that is, uh, if you were to tell them later and they would find it funny, then it's an okay thing to say. If you would tell them later and they would become emotionally distraught and angry and upset, it's not an okay lie. So an example he used was like, if you're late for a date because of diarrhea, you tell her you got stuck in traffic because that's a small white lie. You don't wanna say the embarrassing thing. And if you told her that later, she would think it's funny. And then the other example he used was like, if you tell a girl that you're looking for a long-term relationship and that's what you're after and you go out on a couple dates and then you have sex and you tell her, actually, I was only looking for a one night stand. That's not an okay thing to say because she's gonna be upset and you've emotionally manipulated her and that's not okay. And that is an absolutely very, very good baseline. And now I don't agree with most of the stuff he says or most of the stuff he does. I don't agree with the way he views women or pick up artistry. And a lot of his advice is very like 
misogynistic. It's very old fashioned. I don't like him. I don't agree with him. I think what he does is gross and I don't like the way he talks about women. But I am very glad that unlike most other people in this sphere, he has boundaries around manipulation where obviously a lot of people do not. And they encourage pushing the boundaries, uh, stepping over lines and doing what benefits you, even if it's at the cost of others well-being. This has been my video. I hope that you <laughs> enjoyed. The moral of the story is don't manipulate people. You can have whatever type of relationship you want as long as everyone involved knows what's going on. You can have sex or you cannot have sex. It's up to you. Everyone is different. Everyone is into different things. Different things are gonna work for different people. Find people you want the same thing as. Find people you have common interests with and pursue them. Don't chase people who aren't interested in what you want because ultimately they're gonna get hurt. If you're lying to them to get them attached to you, they're gonna get hurt. I don't care if it doesn't hurt you. You shouldn't be trying to hurt other people. Yeah, so anyway, thank you for coming along. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons, whose names are up on the screen right now. And a huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Wolf, Toulouse, Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Ikazel, Jessica, Ishita, Hope, Eldo, Ida, Queer Cory, and Cory Golightly. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. If you would like to come patron, you can go to patreon.com slash savvycat or click the link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things like out takes and vlogs and live streams, etc. Uh, so yeah, I appreciate it hugely. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah.